after two people drowned here at the Lexington Cemetery Pond. In just two weeks, Lexington police say they'll work with the cemetery to try and make things safer. Lexington police are searching for this man. They think he took off after he crashed into a home. Coming up, we're taking a look at the damage and the cleanup. I'm Mike Byer at the Bluegrass Airport coming up on WKYT News at noon. A Delta power outage has put thousands of travelers in limbo, including many right here at the Bluegrass Airport. This is WKYT News at noon. Good afternoon from WKYT News, and we welcome you in. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. Delta Airlines is reporting cancellations and delays worldwide after an early morning power outage. That's how it all started, then became a big computer problem. Thousands of frustrated travelers like these at the airport in Minneapolis are now left wondering how long it's going to take to get to their destinations. WKYT's Mike Byer is live to tell us the impact this is having on passengers at Bluegrass Airport in Lexington. And that is our top story at noon. Let's go to Mike. Good afternoon, Bill. Slowly but surely, things are returning back to normal here at the Bluegrass Airport. Currently, there are only three flights delayed. Many more were delayed this morning. At one point, nearly half a dozen flights were delayed. The reason being around 2 30 this morning, a power outage in Atlanta impacted Delta computer systems and operations worldwide. As a result, Delta had to ground flights. Now, that ground stop has been lifted and limited departures are resuming. In a statement, Delta officials revealed, quote, flights awaiting departure are currently delayed while flights en route are operating normally. The outage also forced Delta employees to check customers in manually. While this created longer than normal lines, the biggest congestion was at the gates where passengers waited to board their delayed flights. I recently spoke to a traveler who was supposed to fly back home to Florida at 11.30. She says she's now been moved to a 3.30 flight, causing her a lot of stress. I don't have a car. I don't have my parents are in Florida, so I, I need to get to Atlanta. And if I, don't, if I get stuck in Atlanta, I won't have a way to get home. Now, Delta recently tweeted out saying they've canceled over 300 flights due to the power outage. They say systems are coming back online, but delays and cancellations continue. They urge all travelers to check their flight status before heading to the airport. That's the latest here at the Bluegrass Airport. I'm Mike Byer, WKYT. Mike, thank you very much. Now, to get everybody up to the minute, two afternoon Delta flights are currently delayed, along with the one from 1130 this morning. It remains to be seen if any other flights, of course, will be delayed later in the day. We'll keep you updated. Also new at noon, we now know the name of Lexington's latest murder victim. The Fayette County Coroner's Office identifies her as 46-year-old Stephanie Ann Mullins. Police say her body was found outside an apartment complex on Cross Keys Road early yesterday. So far, a cause of death is not being released. We're continuing to look into this. We'll have much more on the investigation coming up in a report on WKYT News at 1230. For the second time in a week, someone has died after falling into a pond at the Lexington Cemetery. This time, police say it was an 11-year-old who drowned. Investigators say DeShannon Davis was fishing with two other kids when he fell into the water last night. He later died at UK Hospital. WKYT's Sean Moody has the latest on the investigation. Sean. The ground here at Lexington Cemetery doesn't just kind of slope into the pond. There's actually a barrier here that's a couple of feet tall. In fact, you can see if someone were to fall into the water, it'd be pretty difficult for them to climb out. For the second time in two weekends, Lexington firefighters had to pull a drowning victim out of the Lexington Cemetery Pond. Last weekend, it was 29-year-old Luis Aravello Jimenez, who police said had been walking around the pond with his girlfriend and fell in. Yesterday, it was 11-year-old DeShannon Davis, who police said had been fishing. Police said DeShannon was in that water for about 30 minutes. They said the other boys who were with him had to go find help, but it took them a while before they came across a groundskeeper at a neighboring cemetery who called 911. Now, that water is between seven and eight feet deep. There are signs that say no swimming and no fishing. Lexington Cemetery policy says anyone under 18 must be with a responsible adult. Police said they're going to try to help make things safer. Oh, we're concerned this is the second drowning in two weeks. Uh, in the same pond. So that is of concern with us and we'll be working with our partners here at Lexington Cemetery to hopefully come up with a solution as to what we could do to make that safer. Lexington police tell me they haven't had any formal conversations with the cemetery yet about what they can do to make the pond safer. 
in Lexington. Sean Moody, WKYT. Sean, thank you. And Lexington Cemetery Management has not returned our call for comment. Police are searching for the man who ran his car into three homes in Lexington early this morning. It happened around 7.30 on Georgetown Street. Right now, police are trying to figure out what caused the man to veer off of the road, drive through the yard, and into the houses and a fence. And WKYT's Mark Barber has a look at the damage. Firefighters have boarded up the damage here on the home, but the damage, they say, is so extensive they had to condemn the house. The man who owns the home says that the force of the crash actually moved the home off of its foundation. I believe that's a house going to have to be uh, torn down because of the extent of the damages. Neighbors like Carl Connor heard the crash, but didn't expect to find this when they stepped outside. It's more than just the hole. The hole is huge, but the house is not even on the foundation. Police think the Jeep jumped the curb on Georgetown Street around 7.30 this morning, knocking over a fence at the first home, a porch at the second home, a support beam on the third home, and on the fourth, well... The house got moved off the foundation. A neighbor says she started taking pictures of the driver when she realized he was leaving. She tells WKYT the man told her he did not have insurance before he took off. Not to have insurance just kind of like adds insult to injury. Two teenagers were inside two of the homes that were damaged, but fortunately, no one was inside the last home the Jeep rammed. It could have been worse than what it was. The homeowner says the home is so badly damaged, there's nothing he can do to save it. As much as he says he doesn't want to, he tells me he's going to try to sell this property. In Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. Police say the Jeep that the driver wrecked is not registered in his name. And people in a Clark County neighborhood are concerned that an illegal business is operating on their street. Winchester Planning and Zoning has sent the home on Mallard Lane two notices of violation, claiming that an upholstery business is being run there on the property. The home is zoned for residential use only. One neighbor wants the alleged business shut down. No, it's not fair. Absolutely not. We paid a lot of money for our home. We don't want a business right out the front door every time you go out and look at the house. We don't want to see traffic going and coming. It... Tonight on WKYT News at 6, our Miranda Combs investigates why the county attorney says these are tough cases to prove. That beautiful weekend is carrying over into the start of the work week with sunny skies and temperatures in the low 80s. But rain chances really ramp back up over the next several days. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is live in our first alert weather center now with a look ahead. Micah. You know, we've been in that pattern where it's just one day after another. You get one or two days where it's really nice. Yesterday was phenomenal. And today's actually really not that bad. Only about a 20% to 30% chance of rain the rest of the afternoon. And it's for one specific location. You got to get down toward the mountains in southeastern Kentucky. That's where we actually see some of those showers at this moment. Frankfurt looks great. Lexington, fantastic. Jackson, London. And that's where we have the rain just to the south of you. That's why you have the clouds out and about. So it's going to be a, a difficult time to actually reach the temperatures that everybody else will. But nonetheless, I mean, a really good looking day in store, a really nice day. We need this big time to kind of dry some things on out. Most of us are going to be doing that again today. Is that small chance is down in the mountains, southeastern Kentucky at 86 degrees. Now, the focus of the forecast is not today because today is not a big deal. It's really tomorrow through your weekend because each and every single day you can add rain into that forecast and that could cause some problems once again with some flash flooding. So that's what we need to be watching out for the next several days and I'll show you that how much rain we're expecting. That's coming up in about 10 minutes. All right and we'll see you then and Fayette County students are enjoying their last days of freedom before heading back to the class this week. And today their teachers and staff are getting ready for the new school year with a back to school pep rally. They're getting behind Superintendent Emmanuel Kalk's blueprint for success, which teachers say starts by changing the culture. You know, that's something that I know Superintendent Kalk's really focused on. Like, we've got to come together if we're going we're gonna to do what's best for all kids in Lexington. And this is a rallying point. This is, this is how we're going to kick it off and make sure that we're, we're all in. The first day of school in Fayette County is Wednesday. It is coming. Well, both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton will focus on the economy this week with new polls showing that Clinton may be widening the lead for the White House. We'll have a look at the latest numbers coming up on WKYT News at Noon.
Also ahead, a Team USA is leading in the medal count in Rio after two of the world's greatest swimmers showed their dominance. We'll have highlights from Rio next on WKYT. Welcome back to WKYT News at Noon. We're one week closer to the election, and this week, both Republican nominee Donald Trump and his Democratic challenger Hillary Clinton will be talking about the economy. Trump will present his plan to the Detroit Economic Club tonight, while Clinton will be campaigning in Florida, hoping to build on the momentum that she has gained in some new polls. A new Washington Post ABC News poll finds that Clinton leads Trump 50 percent to 42 percent. There is an LA Times poll that shows the race is now down to a single point, though, well within the margin of error. So we'll see how all of this uh, trails out here. Uh, also, new uh, news about Clinton's use of a private email server has resurfaced following news that Iran executed a nuclear scientist for spying for the U.S. At least one email sent to the Democratic nominee in 2010 when she was Secretary of State appears to mention the scientist. Iranian officials hanged him yesterday for allegedly giving information to the CIA about Iran's nuclear program. We're here on the University of Kentucky campus where they found a time capsule. We'll give you a look inside and see what they found that dates all the way back to the 1950s. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Boy, it is night and day from southeastern Kentucky to central, north, and western zones. Virtually everybody looking really good for today. We have bright blue skies here in Lexington, Frankfurt. Then you look down toward London, Corbin area, Jackson, go off toward Hazard. It's just kind of ugly, and there's one reason for that. You look down south, there's showers going on. Not so much thunderstorms right now, but if you work your way down 119 and also that 25 corridor uh, coming out of Knox County into, say, Bell County, that's where you're seeing pretty heavy downpours at moments. Staying just to the south of How Rogers Parkway, I do expect at least a chance of rain to get up toward the How Rogers Parkway uh, coming with time. So it's, it's, there's still a chance down there. But this graphic I have not changed since this morning is working out perfectly. You can see that south and southeast at that 40% chance of rain. Farther you get toward the Virginia border and also West Virginia border from Kentucky, the better likelihood of actually seeing some of these showers. And if you run with thunder, cannot rule out a stray shower, but for the most part, we are going to be dry the rest of the afternoon for everybody else. So it's mostly south. Southeast for today. Then we hit Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Look at that. And the next several days, increased chances of rain. And as of right now, I just don't see a day where I can call mostly dry. It's, it's just going to be those chances. It's going to be hit and miss. That's the way we're going to have it. Next several days, guys, which could add up to one to three inches for most. To, uh, I would say Tuesday through your Sunday. But some of us, like we have had it the past couple of times, a couple of rounds, is that you can get a little bit higher than that if you get one thunderstorm after another. So we're going to be looking at that flash flooding threat increasing as we go throughout the work week. Not so much tomorrow, but increasing as we go through the work week. So that's something to watch out for very closely. All right. Those, All uh, right. Back to school shoppers Here need to remember an umbrella. That's right. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're back in a moment on WKYT. One of baseball's most controversial figures is bowing out. And the football cat's big hitter is back after an unsettling offseason. Dave Baker's next with sports. Wildcats fall camp is now in full swing, and while most players aren't fans of this ritual, for players like Boom Williams, it can be a relief. Recently, Boom suffered the loss of his younger sister, and on the field, he missed the spring with an elbow injury that needed to be surgically repaired. This past week, he was cleared for full contact, but Mark Stoops and company are still being extra cautious with their biggest big play threat. The, the, the object with him with the red is just is not to bring him to the ground when, when we're not supposed to be doing that right now anyway. He, he's fine. Um, He's good to go. I mean, we will be smart with him. We can't be silly. He's had some major, major injuries. And so we'll be, we'll have him ready to play. But we do have to be somewhat cautious and let him work his way in there. Now, the NFL is the biggest sports franchise going. And some people believe it's a sport that's unstoppable. Well, almost. Last night's Hall of Fame game between the Packers and the Colts was canceled just before kickoff because of poor field conditions. Now, this NFL shield, the logo at midfield, and there was one in the end zone as well. The players said it was so hard that their cleats couldn't penetrate it. Uh, officials said it was hard and slick. The NFL cited player safety concerns. Good news is all the fans who travel to the game will be given a full refund. How many times has that happened? 
Alex Rodriguez will play his final Major League game this Friday with the New York Yankees and then become a special advisor and instructor with the team. Rodriguez said he didn't want to end this way, but was informed the Yankees plan to release him. In an interview with Fox Sports, Rodriguez said that the Yankees agreed to play him at designated hitter on Friday after the team returned from a three-game series in Boston. He will then be released, get this, collecting the balance of his $20 million guaranteed contract this season and his entire guaranteed $20 million salary next season. And how about some PGA Tour history? Jim Furyk shoots a 58 in his final round of the Travelers Championship. First player in the history of the PGA Tour. That's Jack and Arnie and Tiger and all of them. First guy to ever shoot 58 in a tour event. 46-year-old already shot 59 once in his career, becoming the sixth golfer to do it when he put that number up in the second round of the 2013 BMW Championship. Put him on the Ryder Cup team, please. Tonight on the Big Blue Insider with Dick Gabriel, columnist John Clay, the Herald Leader, and former Wildcat, the glue of the Big Red Machine, Doug Flynn, now of the Cincinnati Reds Network. That's at 6 on 630 WLAP. Guys, the Cats have just gotten off the practice field after this morning's workout. Much more on that coming up throughout the day. But for now, that's a look at sports on this Monday. All right, we'll see how they look later on today. Thank you so much, and keep it here on WKYT. More to come in the next half hour of our news. UK opens up a time capsule from the 1950s. We'll show you what was inside. I'm in Lexington, where police have identified the city's latest homicide victim. Coming up at 1230, we'll tell you everything we know about this case. Tomorrow's Mega Millions jackpot is $38 million, and Wednesday's Powerball jackpot is $67 million.